thought I would do a little video <clears throat> um, about kind of the kind of sad or negative side of um, someone coming out to their partner as trans. Um, or anyone really, maybe not just partners. Um, as you've probably seen from my previous videos, I am in a good place. I, um, I don't feel any anger or anything, but you know, I've read a lot of um, articles, I've read a lot of blog posts, I've seen videos and the vlogs where people do come from an angrier place and um, I was thinking about what does actually make me angry and I think the only time I've ever felt, because I said in the previous video that I haven't felt any anger and afterwards I thought, have I felt any anger? And the only time I have felt any anger is, and it hasn't been towards Zoe, it's been the fact that um, I didn't know sooner, I suppose, like, like, angry that I couldn't be trusted sooner, I suppose, so I'm almost angry at myself, um, or for not noticing, or for all of those things, and I think that's a normal reaction, and I can't be angry at myself forever, because it, it is what it is, um, I think other feelings people might feel, are, um, kind of, um, just like a loss I suppose there's a lot about grief and stuff and I think what you need to remember is that um, you might feel like you've lost someone but they're still there inside that person and there will be days when you feel grief and stuff days when I've just spotted up there there's an old um, photo um, you might look at a photo and just feel this overwhelming like sadness and that's normal like th these feelings aren't abnormal but they won't like last forever unless you allow them to. Like if you work through them, if you talk about them, if you're honest, those feelings won't um, eat you up. They shouldn't eat you up. You know, you could even look at counselling if that's something that you feel would work for you. Um, I think, like my dad died um, before we moved back to Wales and the feelings I feel about thinking about my dad are very different to how I feel about Zoe and kind of um, the changes to come. It's not the same feeling. It's not. It's not a grief like someone's died. I think, you know, I thought that's what it would would feel like from all the things I'd read, but it definitely isn't. That person is still there, still alive, still breathing. You need to hold on to them, in my opinion, if you love them. Um, it is not the same feeling as. Um, like someone who's gone forever um, and I will stand by the fact that if you if you really think about it you can have someone who's them, their true selves or you can have someone who is potentially considering suicide and that is a, a really horrendous thought um, what else have I read and seen um, I've seen relationships not make it, I've seen people not work it out, um, I imagine that's normal. I've seen people lose parents, siblings, friends, from the videos and articles I've read. Um, I'm just like, stroking my dog. <sighs> um, I, you know, I can't imagine what that is like, and mostly for the trans person, like, my sympathies and my sadness lie with them, not the person that couldn't cope with it, because, as I keep reiterating, it isn't about you, it's about the person that's come out to you and they trust you with that information. Um, yeah, I think, like, Zoe and I, like, there's still, like, lots to work through, and, and the way I look at it is... And I've said this to her because I say everything to her that I think and feel. Um, so you could get worried and hung up about the hormones. You could get worried and hung up about um, operations and stuff. But what you need to think is, don't think about those things now. Think about everything in stages. So we've gone from the stage of not really telling anyone to telling everyone to presenting as Zoe to um, name changes and we're at the name change stage now plus some electrolysis um, we're at that stage and 
we'll be at that stage for a while because it's a long process. Um, so I'm not thinking about all the other stages. Um, and I think that's a healthy way to look at it because if you start planning five years down the line, you, your head, you're not going to be able to get your head around that. Either of you, are you? Really, I don't think. Um, another, uh, what, the, the worst thing for us, I think, as a couple, when she came out, was the fact that we've, after two miscarriages, have been trying to have another baby and it just hasn't happened. And I think, for me, that's probably the only thing I've got to come to terms with is that once the hormones start, that's it. It's game over. But at the same time, it was going to be game over at some point anyway. I can't keep putting my body through that, I suppose. We can't keep going through the pain of loss. So the positive way to look at it is almost like that decision has been taken out of my hands now. I have no control over that because I refuse to stop her from living her life as her true authentic self. So if in a year the hormones start, then that is the cut-off point. If in like six months they were to start, that is the cut-off point. If it was in two years and so on, whenever that is, that'll be the cut-off point. And, and I'm happy to live with that. It's There are times when it will hurt. Like I'm not I'm not naive to that. There are times when it will hurt both of us. It's, and that's the thing. It's not just me that it's hurting, is it? Um, Zoe said how she's like had this horrible, like this torn feeling in her heart and in her mind about like be me have a baby be me have a baby and that I don't want to put her through that really um and I had a friend who said she couldn't stand the thought of me having to go through another miscarriage and she said it in the sweetest way and I just thought that was really a really kind and lovely way to look at it um so I think for us on the baby front it'll be left to the hands of fate really um and that's probably the only issue that we've come up, come up against as a couple is what what about the baby, I suppose? The baby that doesn't exist, what about the baby? Um, physically, like, it depends how you feel. If you are... I do, I do have this vibe about, like, when you fall in love with a soul, a person inside, not what they look like, not what they have in terms of body parts. So for me, you know, initially I was a bit like... What, how am I going to deal with you as a woman? Um, but that didn't last very long for me. And that's because of who I am, maybe. Because of my background. Because of my own experiences in life. And not everyone's going to be that quick to be able to deal with that. Um, but what you need to remember is that, that person is still there. And I kept saying to people, like, if Zoe went out and had a car accident and was like numb from the neck down and couldn't function at all then I wouldn't walk away or if she lost an arm or a leg I wouldn't walk away or if she you know I don't know became a cyberman or cyberwoman sorry um I'm not gonna walk away I'll probably run away from a cyberwoman but you know that's another story isn't it uh yeah I just just trying to rationalize things really um, you know, I've read a lot of horrible stories, people losing their families, their friends. It's very sad. I um, I hope that doesn't happen to Zoe, but um, time will tell. Since the news has uh, been shared around, um, different people have shown different versions of themselves. It's been very enlightening. Um, to see who really cares and to see who is kind of non-judgmental really because there are some people that have said things that have just really shocked me and I would say that the things that people have said and done have shocked me more than Zoe coming out to me um, and maybe even the things that people haven't said and haven't done the ones that just don't speak or don't contact her it's like, or even my friends you know, those that don't even say anything about it, it's like that can hurt more sometimes um so for me a lot of the pain comes from other people it doesn't come from zoe or zoe coming out to me it doesn't come from that that's not where my pain is rooted my pain is rooted in the environment around us or the environment that was once around us that doesn't want to know us or the people that say hurtful things or fly away comments that's that's what hurts me i suppose um 
We also use quite a bit of humour to adjust, you know, cracking. Can you hear my dog snoring? Stop snoring as soon as I said that to you. Yeah, we used humour to cope with certain situations or we just, I don't know. You've, you've got to, haven't you, I think? Um, but... I don't know really, I find this a difficult one because we haven't had, between us, we haven't had uh, flare-ups, arguments, you know, I haven't felt any hatred towards her, I felt, uh, not at all, and I haven't felt any anger apart from about me not noticing or helping sooner, but that's my personality type as well, I always kind of blame myself for things. Um, and I don't, I think sometimes you've got to realise that there's sometimes no one to blame. But it's just timing, it's just one of those things and it's hard all round really. You know, Zoe's going to struggle because she's older with certain things. Um, and I just think patience and understanding is key. And if it doesn't work out, like, it doesn't have to be horrible, does it? Like, it doesn't have to be... You know, like I'm in it for the long haul, but I'm just saying if you're feeling at this point where, oh, I, I just don't think it's for me, just don't, don't rush that decision. I've said that before. Um, you know, things are going to be very different all round, whether you're a parent, um, a sibling, a partner, a friend. It's going to be different, but allow that person a chance to grow and nurture them. Don't. Don't infringe your feelings on them constantly because that's hard work on them because they're getting it from everywhere, aren't they? Um, and I think, you know, if you choose to walk away, that's your decision. But you're walking away from the person you've always known and they're not changing. If someone's just changing physically, they're not changing, are they? They're not, they're still them. They still like the same things, they still eat the same food, they still laugh about the same jokes. Just try maybe to breathe, talk to other people, don't always lay out their door I guess and see what happens. I'm excited for the journey, it's going to be scary at times, at the moment it's um, a bit of a a bit of a hard one because um, she's going through so much I guess so many changes and she doesn't know where she stands with a lot of people um, and I am fiercely protective of that uh, so if you see me uh, out and about and someone says something or does something someone gets a drink tipped over their head you know it's me right <laughs> but seriously um, every reaction is going to be different <sighs> just think about why you love that person in the first place I guess was it because of their body parts was it I don't think so anyway um, and that's it really I'm feeling very calm today so I'm talking really slowly oh, yeah, I'm tired but um, I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it's been helpful, insightful anything really um if you've got any feedback if you want to ask any questions just let us know